one I mined, and this is set number 70623, Destiny Shadow from the LEGO Ninjago Hands of Time Wave. This set contains 360 pieces, 3 minifigures, and originally retailed for $29.99 in the US when it first came out back in 2017. This video is of course a part of my Ninjago throwback review series, so make sure to let me know in the comments which set you want to see a throwback review on next. It could be any set from 2011 to 2018, and while I don't have them all, I do have a lot of them, and this set was actually a suggestion from my last throwback review. If you want to see what videos I've already done, there'll be a link to my full throwback review playlist in the description below, but now let's get into this review. So here's the Destiny Shadow, and right off the bat I'm gonna say, when I was younger and I first got this set, I didn't really love it. Like, I don't know, something about it to me just always felt off. Obviously, the entire point of the set is meant to kind of be a downscaled version of the Destiny's Bounty. Obviously, not the Destiny's Bounty itself, there are some differences between the two, but it certainly has a very similar aesthetic, with the dragon head at the front and this little room at the back, and of course the fact that it's called the Destiny Shadow. But now that some time has passed, I have to acknowledge that it is a pretty cool concept, and the fact that this was only $30, too, is actually pretty amazing. Because even though it's not huge, I feel like this is a fairly significantly sized build for $30, especially compared to, like, what we get nowadays. So that's certainly a positive for this set. But now let's take a look at everything up a little bit closer and see everything there is to this build. The dragon head at the front of the ship is simple. I do like the use of the flippers to create some texture right here. But yeah, it's nothing all too crazy. It can be articulated a little bit. You can move it up and down as well as this nose at the front, which can be moved up and down. And I remember when I was younger, that could fall out of place sometimes, which could be a little bit annoying. But honestly, it's not too big of a deal. It connects on this robot arm piece, and you can see that can be rotated as well. Though personally, I think it looks best just to have the face always facing straight forward. Moving back a little bit, there actually is a good bit of deck space here. You probably could fit the entire ninja team if you wanted to. Definitely would be a bit of a tight fit, but you could certainly fit all six without issue. The texture on the side of this build I think is part of what I never really liked as a kid. It's not like bad per se, but it just feels a little bit messy to me. Lots of different colors used, lots of different shapes. I do like getting the robot arm piece in olive green here. That's a very fun color for that part. Not sure if that's coming in any other sets of that color, but it's very neat to get here. But yeah, I don't know. Again, not bad, but also not the prettiest thing Lego's ever produced. We do have two stud shoes at the front, and these can be moved side to side a little bit. And of course, you push down on them, and those studs will shoot out. And then as we move to the back section, you can see there's these giant gold railings right here. These use, like, the giant rubber pipe pieces, and that's actually a really great use of that part. It creates a really unique shape and just makes sure your minifigures won't fall off. And actually looks fairly pretty, like, in-universe. We've got some, like, little pipe exhaust down here, too. And then we come to this very back section, and this is where we have a seat for a minifigure to sit. So you can see there's a printed control panel piece right here that's not exclusive or anything, very common part right there. But of course it fits in with this set, and then there's also a coffee mug on the side of the seat right there. Here's how it looks to have Lloyd actually sitting in the seat piloting the vehicle. And then this roof section back here has some printed solar panels on it, and I assume that's what powers the boat, and those are just really great printed parts to get. Then around the back of the ship, we have three giant thrusters with this purple energy shooting out, and I apologize, it does look like I'm missing one of the trans purple studs here, blame 2017 bricks by mind, but I assume you can put together what that's supposed to look like, and I actually think that purple's a really cool color for the energy. It definitely helps break up the color scheme of the set a bit. And then you may also notice this bright orange lip coming out of the bottom right here, now that actually ties in with the play feature of this set, and that's like these little wings or sails around the sides. These are exclusive vinyl pieces for this set, and the vinyl pieces were something that LEGO was doing a lot during this time, and it's very simple to transform them. You just push in on that yellow lip right there and they'll fly out to the sides. And there's how the Destiny Shadow looks fully transformed, not a huge difference, now it just has the wings around the side, so maybe you can imagine it flying. I think it's a cute transformation, and these are definitely fun parts to get, but in the grand scheme of, like, all Ninjago sets ever, not one of the best play features. Like, it's fine, don't get me wrong, I don't, like, dislike it, but it's also not anything spectacular either. But that's not the only play feature with the set, because you may notice these giant pieces at the back right here. These, in my opinion, are really ugly. I thought that as a kid, too. And that's because they do actually tie in with the play feature here. These giant, like, kayaks are removable and they're meant to be used as separate boats for the minifigures in this set. Now that I do think is a really cool concept, and I love getting these pieces in olive green, that's a great recolor, but I just feel like they probably should have been integrated better, because these giant anti-studs on the back of the ship, I don't know, in my opinion, hurt the overall look. Like, the olive green looks good, and I do like the curved shape of the front, but the bottom side just isn't the prettiest. With them detached, though, they are definitely fun toys to play with, and you can see there's room for probably two minifigures in each boat. And there's also detachable oars on the Destiny Shadow if you want to paddle the boat. So certainly a fun inclusion for play, but I feel like it hurts the overall look of the base build. To reattach these, you just connect these Technic pins to these holes in the ship right here, and of course these oars slide back into these clips at the front, and there's the Destiny Shadow all put back together. So honestly, I still have a very mixed opinion on this build, like, I'm not sure what to say. There's parts of the set that I think are amazing, for one, I think it's very fun for play, and there are parts that look good too, like, I really like the railings, but then there's other parts that are not the best looking, like the kayaks don't think's the best option, this roof section in the back I feel like leaves a little bit to be desired, especially considering the giant gap in the center. The wings, I don't know, it's nice to get vinyl pieces, but there could be more there, and the head, I don't know 
know, there's some fun parts used, but it also just doesn't look great. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself, though. I'll talk about my thoughts on this set a little bit more at the end of this video. For now, let's take a look at the side build in this set, then the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. The side build in this set is going to be quick, because it's just this little flyer for the Vermilion, and I mean, I think this is a good build. I'm happy that we get something for the villains here, because sets don't always come with something for the villains, so it gives the Vermilion something to chase after the Destiny Shadow with. There's also these blades on the side of this build, which give it a really sleek look, but you can also remove them and use them as weapons if you want. And I think that's actually a pretty cool build to give to a Vermilion warrior if you wanted. Here's how it looks to have the Vermilion in this set actually right on the flyer. And now let's move on to the minifigures in this set. So for the first two minifigures in this set, we have the hands of time versions of both Lloyd and Cole. And neither of these figures are really exclusive to the set. Lloyd does come in another full size set. And then technically this is the only full size set that Cole comes in, but he also comes in a poly bag. So there is other ways to get this figure. You can see that unfortunately Lloyd does not come with his arm piece in this set, and that's to allow him to sit in the actual seat of the Destiny Shadow. And that's unfortunate to see, because that just makes this an incomplete minifigure. You can see Cole does have his armor piece here, and it would have been very easy just to tell kids, oh hey, you gotta take the armor off, you wanna sit him down. But I suppose this just made it easier, they didn't have to explain anything, and it just didn't include an armor piece. So yeah, this is inherently a worse version of this figure, however the actual design of this figure is still pretty amazing. I've talked about the Hands of Time suits before, but when they first came out, I really didn't like them, but as time's gone on, I've come to appreciate them a lot more, and now I can acknowledge that they're some of the best ninja suits ever made. Lloyd especially, I love this like bronze design that he has going on, that's a color that he never really uses, but honestly it fits him so well, it contrasts so good with the dark green. Solid black on the belt too is something we don't see all too often, but I feel like it fits him pretty well. And then yeah, he's got like a very armored design, which all the Hands of Time suits had. And then of course like his dragon symbol in the center. Turning him around, he's got his kimono symbol, some pockets back there, and more of that like lighter green armor design. And of course he reuses the hood from Day of the Departed, where he has that lighter green as well as the dark green. Still has his original face on this figure, so nothing all too interesting there. But then of course the part I don't like about all the Hands of Time suits is the arms and hands. You couldn't see it as well because I had him holding accessories, but yeah, these minifigures just have solid black arms, and I really don't see why they decided to do that. Cole actually is the only ninja where it actually looks good on because black's one of its colors, but for Lloyd, the only place black is used is on his belt, and I think it works fine for a belt, but on the arms, it just feels way too overbearing. I feel like regular green or dark green definitely would have looked way better, and the black arms look super out of place, especially without the black armor to complement them. Even with the black armor, it doesn't look great, but without it especially, it feels like they don't fit in at all, and that's a shame because the rest of this figure is truly incredible, but that is by far the worst part of these suits. But luckily, yeah, as I mentioned, Cole does not have that issue because he does actually use black on his suit, so the black arms do not feel out of place at all here, and actually they complement the design of his suit really well. One thing I really love about this figure is how much brown is used, like they use that brown in abundance, I don't know if there's ever been another Cole figure to use brown this much, but it feels like it fits the element of Earth and also does a great job to complement the black, the gray, and the gold on this figure. And yeah, the black of the mask ties in great with the armor and the arms, and you can see there's even a subtle touch of silver underneath everything too. The face print of this figure is Cole's Day of the Departed face, and I think that looks fantastic, one of the best Cole faces we've ever gotten, he's got a scar at the top, and then he's got like the slightly angry expression, and then the alternate face around the other side feels pulled straight out of the show, just a very happy smile. It reflects Cole's personality absolutely perfectly. Just like Lloyd with his armor removed, you can see he's got his kimono symbol around the back right there, and again, more of that brown. Just a gorgeous minifigure all around, one of the best Cole figures ever in my opinion. Oh, and of course also the accessories, they both come with just plain silver katanas, but then Lloyd also comes with the stop time blade. The time blades were of course the collectibles of this wave, and the one that came in this set was the red one. These are really amazing parts, still molded like bronze in a transparent color. Honestly, some of my favorite collectibles too. And then the final minifigure in this set is one of the generic Vermilion, this one they call Vermin. And I talk about this every single time I review a Hands of Time set, but man, the Vermilion are such cool concepts with such amazing minifigures. They absolutely fumbled them in the Ninjago show. I think they're so lame, way too goofy in the show, and I get Ninjago's gonna be a goofy show, it's for kids. But it was such an incredible concept that they just did so poorly. But luckily none of that is present on the minifigure, and the minifigure is still amazing. Starting off, this exclusive molded helmet is really great with like the snakes coming out the sides. I think it would have been probably more accurate if those were solid color instead of trans red, but the trans red arguably does look cooler, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Super detailed armor piece for this figure, too. I love how it comes all the way up the neck, gives it a really unique look, and it's got, like, little snakes on the shoulders. There's a stud around the back, too, if you want to customize this more, but yeah, it just feels very medieval. And then with the armor removed, there's a full look of the minifigure's torso print, where you can see there's, like, these snake tails writhing throughout the armor, because, of course, the entire idea behind the Vermilion is that they're made of snakes. They're just, like, a bunch of smaller snakes inhabiting armor, and they capture that absolutely perfectly there. Now, what would have made this figure better is if there was like arm printing of like snakes going up the arms, but that would have been a lot to ask from LEGO, especially in 2017. I mean, this year in 2023 is the first time we've gotten Ninjago minifigures that come in multiple sets that have arm printing. And then if we turn this guy around to the back, you can see there's more of those snakes, this one's got like his mouth open. Genuinely super cool, and the armor itself super detailed as well, it's just got those snakes on top of it. Just an incredible minifigure design all around, I really really love these guys. Oh, and also the Vermilion Blade's a pretty fun accessory as well, really love getting that part. And so, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? I can't help but feel really mixed on this set. I think overall positive, my thoughts are positive on the 
this set. You heard me talk earlier in this video about the positives and negatives of the build. And while I do think overall parts of the set may be a little bit ugly, at the end of the day, it was only a $30 set that came with three pretty great minifigures and it had a ton of room for play and like multiple options for play. So I think especially if the set had come out when I was a little bit younger, I would have liked it a lot more because it came out when I was 16. So obviously I was still a bit younger, but I wasn't like a kid kid. So I think if this had come out when I was like 10 or 11, I could have had a lot of fun playing with it. But by the age I got it, I was viewing it in a more critical lens. And yeah, it just feels kind of ugly in a few places, but it does have tons of figure space and lots of options for play. And there actually is some pretty cool parts in this set. So if you're interested in this set, yeah, I'd say I recommend it. I was looking at the aftermarket and it doesn't seem too expensive there. So if you like the idea behind it and you want to pick it up, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But also if you're not that interested, I don't think it's a must have. You don't need to go out and get it. You're not missing all too much if you don't have this one. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to let me know in the comments which Ninjago set you want to see a throwback review on next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!